Hi. We're back. Straight before you educate. Hi, straight before you educate. Hola, mi bella gente. Welcome back to another video. We're so excited. Yes. Thank you for hanging out with us. We are just chilling in Claudia's room and we decided that we wanted to film another video in our college series, series that we're doing because, you know, it's a back to school. We thought it would be cool to chat about ways to have the best college experience and ways to make the most of your college experience. And you'd think it'd just be as easy as showing up to college and just, you know, going and just enrolling, but it's not. So we're gonna give you some tips and we hope that you enjoy and learn a little song song. So one of the most important things that you can do to make the most out of your college experience is get to know the city that you are in. That is so, so true. So yeah, so get out of your comfort zone, go explore where your school is located because you'll be surprised this town has more than just your university. There are so many things waiting for you to discover and I feel like if you are someone like me that likes adventures and I don't know, likes putting themselves out there, this is something that will really enhance your college experience so much to the max. And a lot of the time we choose the college that we go to, not only because of the school, but also because of the area. Yeah. So it's kind of a waste to not explore your city that you're in or your town, because a lot of the time it's especially, I think, when you are in a, when you're going to a college that's very uh, campus-like, like the campus is very homey, you just don't really think about leaving it. Mm -hmm. So don't wait until your senior year <laughs> don't wait until your junior year. Don't wait till you have a car. So one way that you can explore your town easily is by going onto Instagram and literally looking up your city mm -hmm. and then looking at all the posts that are in there. That way you can see the light. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> So we are filming with this stubborn ass cloud that wants to go in and out every time he changes the damn ISO. <laughs> so it's okay. Bear with us. We're having so a, sorry if the lighting changes issue. really annoyingly. But. Um, but yeah, so you can just go on to Instagram, literally type in the city that you are in and look at all the Instagram posts and see what people are tagging those posts with. Mm -hmm. Like see if there's any special location that you can go to. For example, in Atlanta, there's a sunflower field and that is an incredible opportunity for awesome pictures, having a picnic. When I was um, at school in Athens, there were so many cool places that people would tag. For example, there's the Iron Horse statue and everybody would go there during sunset to take pictures. Another thing you can do is also check to see if your town has like a magazine or a local newspaper where you can look up um, events. events that are going on and Facebook yeah. also has like usually they have event pages yeah. with your town or your city so that's how we found out or I found out a lot of things that are happening happening in Atlanta like there would be yeah. random like ice cream truck parades and stuff <laughs> and you were just like okay truck I guess I'll go to parties. like that yeah, so there would be like random events and it's just a fun thing to do with your friends. If you have no idea what you want to do on the weekend but you're kind of bored, that's a great thing to do. Go have fun. Explore. Yes. Don't limit yourself to your campus. Exactly. So our second tip when it comes to having your best college experience is do not stick to the same friend or friend group because especially your freshman year everyone's like really scared and you're you freak out and you're like oh my god i need to be best friends with someone and the first person that you become best friends with you cling on to them like a little yes parasite do not do that don't do that warning um <laughs> because most likely i mean there are some cases like i'm still friends with a lot of my friends from freshman year but a lot of the time you won't end up being best friends with them it's mm -hmm. really just like your dependency type of thing yeah that you guys might really do click but 
then later on things happen, you change, and you don't want to just end up with no friends because you stuck to one person. Or in the wrong friend group. Yeah. yeah, so if you find yourself kind of having like a squad or a clique or something, like that's fine. You can have your main like OG squad. But also branch out, find different types of people because yeah. college is like one of the few, actually not one of the few, but it's well, actually, yeah, kind of one of the few times where you're going to be surrounded by so many different people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, so take advantage of that and find people that are that you might not really expect to hang out with and you might find that they change your perspective. They um, teach you something different. I don't know. So just don't stick to the same person. Don't stick to the same friend group. Try to bounce around if you can. Make yeah. it a challenge to go out and like say hi to someone new or sit some, sit next to someone new on the bus. Yeah. You know, if there is a bus on your campus. But yeah. Yeah, so, don't, yeah. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there because you never know. You might end up meeting your best friend mm -hmm. through the most random encounter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that goes along with like going to events that are at your school. Like, go to different organizations, events that they throw on. Like, I know when I was in the Latino student organization, I loved it when people who weren't necessarily Latino would come uh, to our events. And I would be like, oh my god, I'm so happy you came. Mm -hmm. And they would make friends with the other Latino students on campus. So don't limit yourself to specific events either um, because then you're limiting yourself to a certain type of person and you don't want to do that. Don't be afraid to go and... I don't know, go to an event by yourself or go dancing by yourself because odd, the odds are that you're going to meet people yes. and you're going to end up becoming friends with people. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Yeah. So the more, it's kind of like a muscle you have to train. So the more you put yourself into these situations where you're kind of like in a way networking with friends and people, potential friends, um, the more you're going to get comfortable with it and the more you're going to enjoy it. And then sooner or later, you might realize that you're not as introverted as you thought you were. Yeah. So. It's all about getting over the fear. Yes. Getting to know your teachers is so important when you are trying to make the most out of your time in college. And this is because they can be the gateway to so many incredible opportunities mm. for you. So if you have a teacher that you really like or you feel like you really look up to, keep in touch with them and go up to them outside of class, ask them for advice. If you're someone that you don't really know what you wanna do in college, you're like, I'm really lost, but you have a teacher that you're like, I really admire them, they are so awesome. Sit down with them and tell them, hey, listen, I don't know what I wanna do with my life, but this is what I'm passionate about so that they can sit down with you and be like, okay, look, this is how you get to where you wanna be. Or they might know somebody that can help you figure that out. And they're also a perfect source for having letters of recommendation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to go to grad school or if you're applying to study abroad, having that connection is key. And more than just having like the basic letter of recommendations and things for your future, it's also really nice to have someone that has your back because teachers have a lot of like little ways that they can pull strings for you. Mm -hmm. Like I got really close to one of my mentors at my university and when it came to things for my club, the Latino Student Organization, she would let me know about things like under the table that I mean, I don't know if she let, I don't think she let other students know, but since I was so close to her, she would tell me like, hey, you're catering, you need catering for an event, you should use this discount code that I have. Um, that it's only really for teachers, but just say that like I referred you and then you'll get money off. Or she would tell me like, hey, I have this friend that she's great with um, knowing how to advertise on campuses. You might want to talk to her. I can set you guys up. It's really nice to have that resource and have kind of like a parent type yeah. person that has your back when you're away from home. It's super nice. And some teachers are really friendly in the sense they'll invite you to their house. I know my chemistry, my organic chemistry teacher, he invited some of his favorite students to like his house to have coffee and donuts. And it's just like really nice when you break that barrier. And it's not really just like, I mean, don't get like friendly with them, but like, you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> get like nice enough that they're kind of like more than just a professor to you. They're more like a friend, a mm -hmm. mentor, someone that you look up to and that can really teach you a lot of things that 
that they don't really teach in the classroom really exactly so. professors make friends with them not just your peers so another thing that is super helpful when it comes to just making your experience incredible at college is to do your research and really put yourself out there at your college try different organizations try different clubs that you don't think you would be interested in kind of like we were talking about earlier just show up to events from other organizations that you wouldn't really think about going to but this is your chance to go to number one free events for the most part and usually there's free food and you get to meet different types of people that were passionate enough to put on these events. Something else that is really important to research is seeing if there's any certificates that mm -hmm. your school offers or your college inside your school. So basically what I mean by that is a lot of times there will be like a major that focuses on, for example, me, I studied advertising mm -hmm. and my school, the school is the School of Journalism, they offered a certificate program called the New Media Certificate mm -hmm. and basically that just goes into more depth of what's going on in the world of journalism, in the world of advertising, all of that stuff and it really targets things that are like coming up fast in the mm -hmm. industry. So it was really an incredible opportunity for me because I got to um, get certified in new media and I learned about so many things. I learned about technology. I learned about how to make an app. Some people got to make apps for like virtual reality and work on incredible program or opportunities that you would never get to work on if you were just, you know, doing your major. And they're usually only like maybe what 15 hours of credits so I mm. highly recommend checking out like whatever programs your school offers. That's really cool. I didn't yeah. Know that. And if you're someone that is about to get into college, make sure you really research what programs they have mm -hmm. at the universities that you want to go to. So yeah. don't just go to a school because you're like, oh my God, they have a football team and I want to go to the games. Yes, that is really fun and it's important to have an awesome social life, but it's also really good to understand what the programs are mm -hmm. at your college so you don't end up going there and you're like, oh, you know, they offer art here, but I didn't know that their program wasn't one of the best in the United States. So really having that fundamental understanding and knowledge yeah. of what exactly the programs are about is <laughs> essential. Sorry, I just <laughs> imagine your puffball like exploding. <laughs> what? Your mic, because it looks like a little ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm crazy. Um, another thing that I wish I did, well I kind of did, but I didn't really, was rush. I When I say yeah. I kind of did, I did rush, it's not really called rush, but for the multicultural MCG for yeah for the MCG Wait, no MGC MGC that's Medical College of Georgia <laughs> <laughs> I rushed for MCG I was a doctor <laughs> um so I went through kind of like the interest group I was part of the interest group of one of the multicultural Greek council organizations which is like the multicultural sororities and fraternities so I did that, but I didn't rush, but I wish I did because I think I would have met some incredible people along the way that I hopefully would still be friends with. And just to have the experience, I mean, when are you ever going to have the opportunity to rush again in your life? Like you're never going to have that opportunity. Yeah, unless you're in rush hour traffic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so... I highly suggest that I know a lot of people feel like they're above it and they're just like oh my god rush is so stupid but I mean don't take it that seriously just enjoy it it's really yeah. just rush and it's just sororities and fraternities it's not a big deal and if you don't want to rush you could also do the multicultural Greek sororities or fraternities those are also really lit I will have to say yeah like their parties are they are super fun bomb you should go to those parties if you have them because <laughs> All right, so our very last tip on, is my hair okay? 
on how to make the most out of your college experience is to find a side hustle and not just getting a job and being like, oh yeah, I work at McDonald's or whatever. No, actually find something that you love to do and invest in it. So basically what I mean is if you have a passion in something, say that you love photography, really find the time to make this a thing mm -hmm. on the side. I had so many friends who were obsessed with photography in college and they took the time to really invest in a nice camera and take photos of their friends for graduation, for formal. They also went around town because Athens is a big food town or mm -hmm. food um, place. So they would go to restaurants and be like, hey, you know, I'm a food photographer and I'll take pictures of your food for your social media. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible how that became like a source of income from them, for them. So if you're into like illustrations or acting or whatever it is, yeah. see if there's a way that you can turn that into a side hustle so that if you graduate college and you're like, I honestly still don't know what I want to do with my life, you have something that you can turn into a career. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And at the same, on the same note as that, if you had a hobby before you entered college that you don't necessarily want to turn into a career, like you might just enjoy playing the piano like I do on the side, don't give that up just because you are in college. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't necessarily mean like, a side hustle but it can just be a hobby I mean I know it's really hard to find time to still you know engage in your hobbies if your hobby really centers you it makes you happy you don't want to feel off balance and you know feel kind of like you're missing something just mm -hmm. because you became really busy in college in my freshman year of college I looked everywhere for a piano, literally just for a piano, and I didn't realize that. I mean, I could obviously just go to the music school, but I was too scared to go in there because I was thinking it was just for the music majors, the music minors, but I went in there and I found a room with a piano, and I just found out that anyone can really use it. And I just continued practicing, and that way I just didn't let go of that other thing that I really loved doing while I was still you know, while I was still studying and doing other things and pursuing what I wanted to do. So it's, it's, it's possible. Amen, sister. Yes. All right. So that is all for our tips on how to make the most out of your college experience. We really hope this was super helpful because yeah. it's kind of hard when you're going into college. It is really hard. Yeah. It's very stressful. Yeah. And you're overwhelmed yeah. and stuff. So it's a long chunk of your life that you want to enjoy and you don't yeah. want to just remember it for studying and for, you know, not tests having, and quizzes and not having advantage of the moment. Yeah. And make sure to keep up with us if you want to, you know, see what we're doing. <laughs> You can follow us on Instagram at Claudia X Greta. She's Claudia and Greta. We never say that in videos. Yeah, we don't. I feel like people do, they might think like you're Greta and I'm Claudia. But yeah, no. no. I'm definitely Greta. And I'm definitely Claudia. Yes. Yeah, and we will see you next time yes. on our next video. Bye. Bye.